We are here with Dr. Mary Ellen Taplin, who is a professor of medicine at Harvard Medi Medical School and Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, to discuss some of the really exciting prostate cancer abstracts that are being presented here at this year's meeting. Hi, Dr. Taplin, thank you so much for being here this Hi. year. My pleasure. So, it's been a really exciting year for, so far for genitourinary cancers. So, looking at the prostate cancer studies being presented here this year, what are you most excited about? Uh, well, I, I'm excited about a lot of things. Um, particularly excited about all the new clinical trials. So, uh, the section of clinical trials in progress is uh, wonderful to see all the new drugs in evaluation and the new pathways and the correlative science to help us understand how treatments are working and not working. So it's future data, but it's exciting work to come. And patients are always asking us what's new, what's in testing. And so um, that group of uh, presentations is, is I think, uh, very appealing. Absolutely. Now, there's a trial looking at the combination of cipulosal T with radium-223 dichloride in metastatic um, asymptomatic bone metastatic castration resistant disease. So do you discuss the rationale for this combination and what the findings look like for this study? Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, it's a very small study. Uh, two companies uh, came together, uh, Dendrion and Bayer. Uh, and this is a trial that's run out of Johns Hopkins. And 32 patients, so small, uh, were randomly assigned to either cipulose-LT alone or cipulose-LT and radium. Uh, and interestingly, uh, there were some very good responders in the combination group, both in terms of PSA response and radiographic progression. Now, it's a very small study, and I think we need to um, curb our enthusiasm a little bit and see uh, what a larger data set will look, but it would be, um, uh, it's very promising. You know, it's based on the rationale that the, the radiation from the radium can expose antigens and prime the immune system for a treatment like cipulose LT. So very rational um, design and um, exciting early data. Good, thank you. Yeah. So uh, apalutamide is another um, anti-androgen that has garnered a lot of interest in prostate cancer and this year we're seeing um, an analysis from the Titan trial looking at PFS2 and metastatic castration sensitive disease. So what additional data have we learned with these results from this year? Well, uh, today they presented uh, an exploratory endpoint uh, called PFS2. Uh, the definition of PFS2 is at the time of entry into the trial, uh, patients are followed through their response to either apalutamide or placebo, and subsequently through their response to the next treatment they get, whether that's another hormone therapy or another chemotherapy, uh, and then looking at that time. So uh, they presented today on a, a small number of the whole cohort of patients, only about 270 patients, and it looked like um, the PFF2 certainly held up with the apalutamide group compared to the placebo. Now you might expect that to, anyway, it makes sense because they're getting an extra therapy, the apalutamide as opposed to placebo. Um, and I think the caveat with this one is there's very few events so far that can be measured. Um, and so uh, I think this is the first we're going to hear of this data and really to synthesize it and feel good about giving uh, earlier treatment that, it that will correlate with PFS2 and overall survival. We need another year or two of data. Uh, but it's very good early look, I think, at, at that trial. Good. Wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Now, before you were talking about some of the clinical trials in progress, and this year you're actually presenting on um, the Proteus trial with apalutamide in localized high-risk or locally advanced prostate cancer. So what are the goals of that trial, and can you give us some background to it? Sure. Um, so, prostate cancer is one of the few cancers where we haven't uh, proven uh, with data that combining systemic therapy with surgery improves outcomes. So this trial, called the Proteus trial, is the first uh, large phase three neoadjuvant trial in 12 years wow. in localized high-risk prostate cancer. So uh, based on some preliminary data from a series of phase two trials looking at intense hormone therapy prior to prostatectomy, uh, this trial was designed and we're evaluating 
uh, uh, standard hormone therapy plus apalutamide uh, with standard hormone therapy for six months before prostatectomy, followed by another six months after prostatectomy. And then there's co-primary endpoints in terms of the pathology uh, from the prostatectomy specimens and uh, metastasis-free survival. Um, so if this is a positive study, uh, it could um, prove that the pathology, the early endpoints are, are valid for larger, longer down the road clinical endpoints. It could really open the door for a lot of other good work to be done in, in this space. Uh, and the exciting news about this trial is it's accruing much quicker than we had even projected. Uh, it's very well received by patients and um, treating urologists and medical oncologists around the world. So, um, you know, it'll take two and a half years to accrue and another couple of years to follow, but um, we're really excited that this trial is uh, getting done so quickly. That's wonderful. It sounds like a really interesting study. Yeah. So, looking at the data that we're seeing obviously presented this year, what do you think the future holds for prostate cancer by the end of 2020? By the end of 2020, so uh, 10 months from now. Yep. <laughs> um, I, I think that uh, as far as treatments in the clinic, things don't change that rapidly, unfortunately. I think the recent advances of um, understanding DNA repair alterations in prostate cancer, developing drugs in the uh, PARP inhibitor group um, has been exciting recently for prostate cancer. I think we're going to learn more about that group of patients, who are the exceptional responders versus non-responders. Um, the newer hormone drugs have been around now for uh, 10 or more years, but we're learning how to use them earlier uh, in various contexts, uh, non-metastatic prostate cancer, hormone-sensitive prostate cancer now uh, with surgery and radiation. So I think that work will continue. Um, but what excites me is uh, like the really early drug development, the, the new pathways that, that you know, we're looking at. Um, uh, and uh, I, I, I don't think those drugs, you know, obviously will come out in 2020, but um, we may get into like deeper phase two studies and more of a sense of what's working. Dr. Taplin, thank you so much for being here today. You shared some wonderful insight and some really uh, exciting data too. So thank you so much. We appreciate okay. it. You're welcome. Thanks a lot.